Hi, I'm Dr. Chloe Costigan, and I'm one of the co-owners of Mobility Doc. Over the last several weeks, I have gone through um, the, the beginning stages of my injury through full recovery. I'm here for the last installment where I'm going to give you guys a recap of what I had been doing in the initial stages of re-entry into running, and then also what I've been doing now in this final stage of re-entry. What I wanna to share today is what my re-entry phase has looked like. But also I wanna share a little piece of information in terms of something that I was probably the biggest takeaway throughout this entire process. So here I am in the final stages of what I've been calling re-entry. Let me recap a little bit of like what that initial stage of re-entry looked like um, and then kind of where I'm at now because they're related to each other. For the initial stages of re-entry when I started to run again, I was thinking just about volume. So what I mean by volume is what my weekly mileage was. So I was like progressively increasing how much I was running, just focusing on nice, easy runs, also on like soft surfaces. I used a bunch of different questions related to pain and my quality of gait and my heart rate to kind of guide myself. I followed that general principle of increasing by no more than 10% per week. But what I also did though too was I just kind of decided to take a look at like, okay, well, how was my body responding to some of these runs? Because then that's what was helpful in terms of giving me an idea of how much I should do each day. For a little bit more detail, um, I had written about that in my blog. But generally speaking, though, I was asking myself questions like, did it hurt during my run um, or after? If it hurt during my run and it was progressively getting a little bit worse, then I knew that I had to back off some of that volume. If it was also uh, just hurting more so after, then I would see how it responded to some of that recovery work. And this is what I mean when we say things like listen to your body, right? <laughs> Listening to your body means asking yourself a ton of questions, right? So I was just constantly collecting data in terms of kind of seeing like, okay, I'm providing this stimulus of increased volume. Now, how am I responding to that? So again, I needed to look at things like pain um, just during and after. And then I also needed to look at my quality of gait, my heart rate, general fatigue, things like that. So during this final stage of re-entry, the thing that I'm focusing on is intensity. I needed to get back to doing some of my typical workouts, right? And that's where it gets really tough. And this is where I really help, um, where I tried to be um, helpful for my patients is that this is hard to know what to do. You know, like you can be told like, okay, you're gonna slowly kind of get back into it. But then here's where actually people re-injure themselves is because they don't know how to manage some of the volume and then also intensity. What I mean by intensity is the pace of the run or doing things like speed workouts. So uh, once I kind of had built up a pretty good base, I was running about 30, 35 miles, then I knew that I was like, okay, now I can start to do my beloved track workouts. So I started with doing actually progressive runs where I would start at a certain pace and slowly drop down because that was a way where I could kind of see like, okay, what is my body doing as I start to do something that's a little bit more challenging? So again, I asked myself those same questions related to pain. So what was the pain like during the run? Was it increasing? Was it staying about the same? And also just some general tightness too. Like, so any of those symptoms related to that whole like shin calf area, kind of seeing what that was like. When I first started doing things where I was running like in the low eight minute pace, I could definitely feel that calf a little bit more because it just hadn't been challenged in that way for a period of time. So then it also just meant that I just needed to do a little more recovery work. I also needed to continue to be diligent about doing all of the other hip flexibility and strength work that I was working on before. And this is a really important point. When you are in this re-entry phase, whether that's the initial or also in this final that I'm talking about now, so whether you're increasing volume or intensity, it is normal to have some amount of discomfort. Now, here's where it's also helpful to have an experienced and trained provider that can help you with that. But the thing though is that your body is trying to respond to a stimulus. So you went from not running at all to beginning to run then you are running and now you're increasing the speed. Your body has to respond to that. And it's actually helpful for letting that area to continue to heal because you're telling it, okay, this is, this is how you should respond to that, but take care of it during that time and use some of this decision-making to kind of guide how much of a stimulus should you have. So it's normal to have some amount of discomfort, but it just can't get out of, out of control because then that means then that you're not really going to be helping yourself. This is the sort of thing that I help patients with all of the time 
I know that it kind of sounds like I'm just kind of listing all of these questions and it can seem kind of vague. You don't have to do this on your own, right? This whole concept of quote unquote listening to your body is really challenging to do because you need to know what questions even ask yourself. Remember all of this, this re-entry is tailored to you. It's tailored to what it is you're asking yourself to do and then how you're responding to that. So it's totally reasonable that what works for me isn't going to work for you and vice versa. It really is just about being able to create kind of this whole picture of what questions can I ask myself and then answer in order to kind of know what's best for me in that moment. And everyone is going to be different. I work with thousands of patients a year and I can tell you that it's different for every single person. It's one of my most favorite things to do though is um, just helping people to be able to just be a better athlete or just also just being better at essentially just living in your body by just knowing a little bit of how your body responds. Because again, what works for someone isn't gonna work for another person. Throughout this entire process, one of the things that became just so apparent to me is how much of this recovery process is also mental. It was incredibly challenging for me in terms of just being able to manage what it means to not be able to run. And then also then when I did start to run, like how can I run in a safe and effective way? One of the things that I was just thinking about um, on my last track workout, I was on, I think like the fifth of six 200s. It was at the very end of my workout was I said to myself, Chloe, you can do hard things. And like part of the reason why I said that was because I have this like terrible fear of failing and failing just in a general sense, you name it. I don't like to fail at anything, even things I have no business being good at. Um, but the thing though that I thought about then after the fact is that after I told myself like you can do hard things is that that's actually what so much of this rehab process is. That's what this recovering from an injury is, is you're doing something hard, right? Because you're saying to yourself, okay, I'm hurt, I have to um, take this time off, I have to figure out what it is I should be doing. Then when I am ready to run, I need to figure out how much should I be running? How intense should I be running? And you know, you're asking yourself so many questions. You're trying to navigate this process that really is unique to you. And it's hard. It's also really hard to change how you run um, and then also the volume of what you do, the intensity, what you need to do pre and post. You know, there are so many layers to this. So I think that it's really important to remember that like, this is not easy, but also the whole point though is that it's not easy, right? In the pursuit of doing something like training for running, it's not easy. Going into it, knowing that this process is challenging and requires a lot of iterations and, you know, trying like a little bit of trial and error, knowing that that's going to be the approach from the get go can be really helpful. The other thing that I want to reiterate is that you don't have to do this alone. I hope between the blog and then these videos, if you are dealing with an injury um, or you think that you kind of might be in the beginning phases of one, I really hope that this is, um, that this has been helpful for you guys. Also, the other thing is that you don't have to do it alone in terms of if you're not exactly sure what questions you should be asking yourself or where you should be at in terms of some of that rehab process, let someone who's qualified help you. It's not as simple as saying, oh, just listen to your body, right? It's like, well, what are you listening for? So you need someone who can help you in that process to kind of tease out all of that information because while there might be some general questions that we ask, they're also tailored to you and what your specific goals are. I really appreciate you guys following along um, in this entire journey. I'm going to say to you that it was incredibly helpful for me to have this as an outlet in terms of just like sharing my story, managing my own stress around being hurt and not being able to run and missing it. And then also my hope though was that you guys would be able to benefit from it in some way. Be sure to check out the rest of our YouTube um, because there are so many great resources um, in terms of for all of the videos that we had related to, to this injury, but then also the shin recovery that I was doing, all of these other like little tidbits of information that we share of things that we've just learned over the decade of practicing.